Hey everyone, today I wanted to talk a bit about uh, cables because that's a pretty important part of your solar setup. So in my house, my best solar placement is here on the southern side of my house. Uh, you can see I have my panel set up here on the deck, but unfortunately my electrical panel is way over 50 feet away and this is where I'd like to have the Yeti set up so that I can hook it right up to a pair of transfer panels. So we all know that with DC power, it's a lot more sensitive to losses than AC power. And so what we want to do is maximize all the power we're getting out of our panels and not waste it on resistance in our wire. And goal zero panels come with these standard eight millimeter cables. Unfortunately, they're only 16 gauge wire, which is pretty puny. And I think this is pretty unacceptable. So my first recommendation is get one of these combiner cords where you can plug one all the way up to four eight millimeter cables and combine them into this much, much beefier Anderson power pole cable. And I just recently got a pair of extension cables for this. We'll plug these in here and you can see it makes a really nice tight fit. And the most important thing with the Anderson cables though is the wire gauge. So these are 12 gauge wire. So that's significantly thicker than the 16 gauge wire, which means less electrical losses. So coming back to my original problem, I had 50 to 60 feet of cable to run and I talked to Goal Zero and they said, well, you know, it'll be about five to 10 watts of loss uh, for each cable. And so I wanted to test that. So I got a whole pile of these Anderson 15 foot extensions. One, two, three, and the original one that I bought. So I have four total for up to 60 feet. And instead of relying on the sun, I thought I would rely on my fast charger here. So we'll have a steady amount of power going in here. So first things first, let's establish a baseline. So this has my fast charger plugged right into the Yeti through the combiner cable. And you can see we're getting about 267 watts, which is really good. All right, so let's take our first extension cable here. We will plug it in. I'm not very good at doing that, but there we go. And plug it in and let's let it settle. I find it takes a few seconds for whatever power source that you're charging to register. Now you can see it coming up here. And you know, we're at 254 watts. So we're talking about about 4% power loss here. So not too bad. I would, this is an acceptable amount of loss, I guess, for 15 feet of cable. So let's move on to the second one here. So this is another 15 foot extension. So now we're up to 30 feet total. Plug that in, plug it back into the Yeti. Give it a minute here. It will start to settle in. Now we're expecting it should only be a couple Watts less and moment of truth. Well, that's not very good. That is not very good at all. So we actually have a pretty big drop here in power. So this was my first really surprising result. This is a 27% loss in power by having a second extension cord. So already we're at the realm of this isn't worth it, but let's try a third and see what happens. So, you know, if you project this out, we're gonna probably be at about 50%, but let's see. I'll plug it in. These are very good connectors, they're really tight. So I am very happy about that, but I am less happy about all this loss that we're seeing. All right, so now we've got a third cable in here. Moment of truth, and ooh, that's real bad. I mean, that's 136 or so watts, which is really low. So we've at this point lost 49% of our energy to the cables. So this is real bad. So at 45 feet or three extensions, we're already in big trouble, but let's keep going here. So this is now our fourth extension cable. So this is 60 feet. These just sometimes can be a little tricky to get together. I'll right, plug it in here. Now I found that with each progressive cable I added, it took even longer for it to settle in. So we'll give it even a little more time here. I did edit these down because they were kind of boring to watch. 
And look at that, 61% of our power is now lost. So to summarize my findings, you know, one cable's fine, two's questionable, and uh, three or four is madness. So do not use more than one or two extensions. And remember, these results are with the heavy duty 12 gauge Anderson power pole extensions, not those wimpy 16 gauge eight millimeter extensions. So I'm guessing that our losses would be even heavier with that situation. So that got me thinking, maybe it's all the connectors. So I went ahead and I bought myself some legit Anderson power pole connectors, 12 gauge wire, and I made up a 55 foot DIY Anderson power pole cable. So that way I only had two connectors, uh, same gauge wire, because 10 gauge wire was really expensive and really uh, heavy. So here we are, we're gonna hook up my DIY version here. So 55 feet, 12 gauge wire, oxygen free copper, and this should be much better and it's super disappointing. Look at that. So I would say this is pretty much right in line with what we'd expect. It's um, better than the four Anderson power pole um, extension cords, but not by much. So I learned the hard way that really you need to keep your DC power runs as short as you possibly can. So going back to my original problem, I still need to have my integration kit transfer panels right next to my electrical panel right here. However, instead of putting the Yeti there, I'm going to use a 10 gauge, super heavy duty AC power cord to run along the wall so that my Yeti can be much, much closer to where my solar panels are on the opposite side of the basement. And this 10 gauge extension cord is rated to carry 15 amps or 1,875 watts in a safe way. So I think with the Yeti's 1,500 watt uh, continuous output, this type of wire is the appropriate choice for a 50 foot run. And one other nice feature of this cable is at this end, there are three female plugs. So I can plug both home integration kits directly into that cable without the need for a power strip or splitter. And you can see here, I've tacked this up near the ceiling in the basement. And this is right near where the solar panels are. And so I can run one 15 foot cable from here up to the deck and hopefully plug my panels in with just one connection there, one extension. So I'm only gonna get my four or five percent uh, loss in power there. So I'm excited about that. And in the next couple of days, I'm gonna be doing a full video showing my entire setup with the propane generator, the solar panels, the home integration kit, um, and everything else all working. So looking forward to posting that. Thanks so much, and I'll see you soon.